Has this ever happened to you? What's wrong? I forgot what I came in here for. Eh, well, can't have been that important then. Who came up with that? Importance does not guarantee remembrance. Exhibit A. You may or may not have noticed that I am slightly a little bit fabric obsessed. It's a healthy obsession, depending on your definition of healthy. But I digress. So to have completely forgotten that I had a bag full of fabric hidden away is not a testament to how important it is to me, it's more of a testament to how disorganized I am. Now when I originally brought these fabric remnants home from the thrift store, I washed them and they had most definitely been stored in mothballs for a long period of time because the washer, the whole room actually, stunk so bad. It did eventually go away, but in the moment I was so upset that I might have ruined my mom's washer that I jammed the fabric into a bag and stuffed it away out of sight and out of mind. These are all remnants of wool fabric, which is amazing. A little less amazing is the fact that they are all cut into sections, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to work with. I might be limited on what I can do with it. I'm starting with this plaid fabric. I have been wanting to make a three-piece suit for myself for I don't know how long. A long time. Now, I won't have enough to make a three-piece, but I can settle for a two-piece, a waistcoat and trousers. Even just two pieces is going to be tight. I have two sections of fabric, each about one yard, with a little chunk cut out of one, unfortunately. For trousers, I used a pattern I made some years ago. Please do not ask me how I did it. I truly have no recollection. Not having paper at the time, I guess, I just used the muslin mock-up as my pattern documentation. I made a few minor adjustments and had my trouser legs. Then I took a break from the trousers to work on the waistcoat. I wanted Viennese seams for it, and since a waistcoat is very similar to a front button bodice, I could save time by using my pattern from my gray dress and altering it just a little. After I made certain of my alterations, I cut it out of the wool and then finished cutting out the remaining pieces for the trousers, which was tricky because I had very little fabric left and this fabric also happened to be directional. Do you ever run into this problem when you're sewing? Determining the right side from the wrong side can be baffling with some fabrics. I can't really give too much advice on how to determine it other than looking really close and maybe borrowing a magnifying glass. But once you determine which side is which, place a safety pin on the right side to prevent you continually questioning which is which as you piece the garment together. It was at this point I started considering the zipper, and for some reason I was flummoxed. The answer to the question of using brown or black was eluding me, so I put it to an Instagram vote. I'm not sure why the indecision I was planning on using this black fabric as the the back of the waistcoat so the answer should have been obvious, but oh well. These were all of my pieces for the trouser legs, all of the small pieces, and the trouser legs. Actually, I completely forgot the top of the trouser front is not going to look like this. It's going to look like this. pockets and pleats were finished. I added a dart to both back legs and the time had come to insert the zipper. The Instagram votes had come in with most in favor of brown, which made me sad. I'm sorry if I disappoint you when I tell you that although Instagram votes present the appearance of my asking you to decide for me, you're actually helping me to discover what I really want. And I took an inordinate amount of time explaining why I really wanted the black zipper instead and watching the footage back I realized that the sound was not recording, so you get this rather disorganized voiceover, which is far more interesting than any I said in the actual footage. I finally made the adult decision to go ask my mom what she thought. Again, under the guise that she was deciding for me, when in reality she was simply letting me talk it through to discover what I wanted. By the way, she saw right through it. The consensus between myself and myself was that the black zipper would win because I wanted to use black lining and I could not use a brown zipper with black lining. And the brown fabric made the plaid look rather flat, while the black fabric made the plaid appear more defined. Also, I hate chocolate brown. So I inserted that black zipper to my matching heart's content and stitched up the side seams. I cuffed up the leg hems and finished them with some hand stitching. Sorry to rush through the steps of the trousers. I was rushing to have them ready because I wanted to wear them to an interview the next morning. And I added a clasp at the front. I'll most likely be replacing it with a button and buttonhole later, but like I said, rushing. I don't know when last I filmed slash worked on this project, but I feel like it's been a really long time. What day is it? 
Friday, Friday. So it's been about three days. I haven't sewn in about three days. I am wanting to get back to it. But before that, let's address the elephant in the room. Not you, Henry. I am now in possession of a sewing table or cutting table, what you will. And I am so grateful to have this thing. It is actually um, two folding tables just pushed together and then the cutting mats on top. And you may be asking, why two tables? Why not just one? I already had the one folding table because I was doing farmer's market and I learned that's not my thing. But anyway, I had the one table and I was trying to figure out if I could just put one cutting mat on top of that and use that as a cutting table. And it just didn't work because the width and the length of the cutting mat just didn't fit with the table. So in order to make it work, I would have to get another folding table and then put the mats on top perpendicular to the tables. I got another table, set them up, put the cutting mats on top of them, and I have my sewing table. I could get by without one. I'd be fine. I have knee pads, but half the time I can't find them. I am trying to get more organized. I promise. I am. It's a work in progress. Enough talking. I'm getting back to work. Oh, also, I got a microphone. I have a sewing table. I have a microphone. Who am I? Actually, I bought this microphone um, many months ago and just now figured out how to use it. I messed up on it at the beginning of the video. Couldn't figure out how to use it. So there was no audio. So that's why. After all that stalling, I jumped back in to cut out the lining, the interlining, the two back pieces, sandwich some pieces together making them one, and sew up several, several side seams. I am such a genius. I was working on my welt pockets and marked the stitching line before I stabilized it. Making welt pockets can be intimidating. It was definitely scary for me the first time I made one. There are quite a few steps and you do have to go slow and be fairly precise, but they're not so bad. And it's super satisfying once you're finished. Then I could sew the side and the shoulder seams together, the front pieces to the back. Wait, it's easier to see it this way. The back to the front pieces. And the same with the lining. Now it's time to sew the waistcoat and the waistcoat lining together. Fun fact, that was done over the course of about four days uh, because I did get the job and I've been very busy with that. And also I am now sick, so I've been very busy with that. So I've just been doing tiny, tiny steps as I am able. So yeah, that took four days. Unfortunately, because of all the busyness and sickness, I completely and totally forgot that I did not make all of the adjustments on the waistcoat. I was waiting until I got to a certain point to adjust the bottom because I wanted it to be perfect. And I was going to try it on and angle it at the perfect angle and I, I completely forgot I was going to do that so that means that I have to take the stitching out open up the front here and <laughs> adjust the angle on both sides and that makes me kind of sad but I gotta do what I gotta do so we'll see how long that takes me <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Ta-da! Did it. And I was able to do it all within one day. Not all at once. I had to do it a step at a time as I was able, but I got it done and it doesn't look too bad. But it is now already pretty late. I need to go to bed because I have to get up at three to go to work. So I will try to do buttons and buttonholes as I am able. I really did intend to film me making some buttonholes, but I didn't because making buttonholes on this machine sends me to another place, a bad place, and apparently causes me to draw blood. I really don't know how that happened. But sewing on buttons is pretty straightforward and it went pretty smoothly, which was nice because funnily enough, I was hoping that I could finish the waistcoat in order to wear it to another interview the next day. It's finished. I finished it. And hopefully I can wear it tomorrow, which is going to come so much sooner than I wanted to. These three o'clock mornings are a little rough. They would probably be a little less rough if I could manage to get to bed before 10, especially since it takes me about two hours to wind down and actually fall asleep. I'm working on it. It's another work in progress. But the next time I see you will probably be in the reveal. So, see you then. One more quick distraction. Do you ever have a picture of something in your mind that you would love to have, but you know that it will never be a reality, and that's okay. You don't mind. You can dream, and maybe you can find something similar, but then you see the exact thing that was in your mind in your local thrift store, and they are in your size. There were exactly two pairs of dream shoes that used to live in my mind. Now there's just the one pair. So maybe it's not all that bad to dream, occasionally.